thanks for checking back in at the San Antonio Zoo today. My name is Tracy and I am an animal care specialist in the aviculture department here at the zoo, which means I work with birds. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how I feed the American white pelicans, which is one of my favorite bird species. A little bit about these, these guys is that we have eight American white pelicans and they are all rescued, which means that they were found in the wild and a lot of them have wing injuries, so they are not able to fly, which is why they are here. We don't know how these injuries happened. It could have been from a boating accident, could have been from a car accident, it could have even been from a shark attack. We're not sure. But they can't fly in the wild, which means that they wouldn't be able to hunt for food in the wild. So that's why they're here, and they're nice and healthy, and we get to take care of them and enjoy them and learn about them. So we have five male American white pelicans and three females. And if you look closely, you can see the size difference. We have a female right over here. There's another one right behind her. And the third one is this one back here with the big splotch of black feathers on her side. That's Lucille. And the male pelicans are gonna be a lot bigger if you look closely. Everyone thinks that they weigh a lot because they are huge birds, but birds actually have hollow bones and hollow organs, so that helps them to fly. So these guys actually only weigh about seven or eight pounds each. So I'm gonna go ahead and start feeding the birds. And what I feed them is a fish called capelin. This is what the capelin looks like. And they really like it because it's flexible. There's no sharp spine on it, so it's very easy for them to swallow. There are fish in the exhibit. We have tilapia as well as koi. And I always get asked, do they eat the fish in here? Well, they definitely can, but it's a little big, so it would be hard for them to swallow. So they actually prefer to eat the capelin. It's also kind of like, would you rather go through the drive-thru or would you rather go out and pick berries? They're pretty lazy, which I can agree with sometimes. So as I'm feeding them, if you guys notice, they don't chew the fish at all. They swallow it whole. They don't need to chew it up like people do. They're actually related to reptiles, which swallow their food whole for the most part. And so if you can see, they actually don't have that tonsil reflex in the back of their throat. If you look at their pouch, it's actually called a guller pouch, and it can hold up to eight gallons of water. So if you think about a gallon of milk, they can have up to eight of those in their pouch at once. That pouch helps them because when they're flying through the air with fish in their pouches, it actually drains the water out so they can dive in, grab a fish, and as they're flying away, the water slowly comes out of their pouch so that they can digest their food. You guys may be wondering what that is on their beak and it's a little growth made out of keratin, which is exactly what your fingernail is made out of, and it's called a breeding comb. The males have a bigger breeding comb, but the females do still have small ones. And what it is, is a little growth that grows in the springtime, so they are all starting to get theirs right now. And what they do is the males actually do something called sparring with their beaks, which is just like sword fighting for the girls. And when they spar so much, it actually breaks off the breeding comb of the least dominant male. And so when that comb breaks off, there's no blood or anything. It's just like breaking the end of your fingernail off. So you can already see that some of the males kind of have little breaks on theirs. You can see it's kind of stringy. It's just a bunch of little pieces of keratin like your fingernail. So the male that has the biggest breeding comb is the dominant male for the season and every single season, it changes males. It is never the same. So another thing about American white pelicans is that they are actually born with a very pale face. And as they grow, they turn orange. So if you look at this guy right here, he's a little bit paler in the face than the others. He's about four years old now. And this guy over here, this is Harvey. He came in during the hurricane, during Hurricane Harvey a couple years ago, and his face was completely white. So he is about two years old now. 
you can see the difference in two years old, four years old, and here's my big dominant male. We're not sure of his age because he was brought in from the wild so long ago. So this is short stop, and he is at least 10 years old. American white pelicans can live to be about 35 years old in human care. In the wild, they normally live to be about 15 years old. When pelicans are young, they have that pale face, but they also have solid black eyes. So if you look at the eyes of all of the pelicans out here, most of them are a crystal blue, and that makes you realize that they are all adult pelicans. If you guys notice, they have little bracelets on their ankles, and each bracelet has a number that I can see very clearly. We do that so that if something's going on, if there's an, a medical concern about a bird, or maybe a bird isn't eating very well that day, we can look at the bracelet number on them and know exactly who we need to keep an eye on. If you guys are just joining us, these are American white pelicans at the San Antonio Zoo. There are five males and three females. I'm feeding them a fish called Capelin today. These birds are all rescue rehabilitated birds that were not able to go back into the wild. Most of them have something called a fused wing. An effused wing means that their wing was broken in the wild, we don't know how, and it healed incorrectly, which is why when you break your arm or your leg, you go to the doctor and you get a cast put on it. And that makes sure that the bone grows straight so that you can still use it. Well, these guys broke their bones in the wild, so they weren't able to go to the veterinarian to get it fixed. So it actually healed crooked, which is what fused is called and so they can't fly anymore. But other than flying, they are completely healthy, which is why they're here, so that we can learn about them and educate you guys about them. Things that you can do to protect pelicans in the wild is definitely reusing your plastics. That is the biggest number one thing. In the wild, they consume so many plastic trash bags that have flown into the ocean. You can also reduce your water usage. So when you're brushing your teeth, turn the sink off. That's a huge thing that can save so much water. So much water for the pelicans and other aquatic animals that are out there. Tracy, Camilla would like to know what they do in the winter when it's cold. How do they keep warm? That's a great question. So American white pelicans are actually found all over North America, all the way up into Canada and they are found all the way down here into the Gulf Coast of Texas, Louisiana, Florida, Mississippi. And so they are actually used to dealing with all different kinds of climates. Some of these pelicans were actually brought in from a reserve in Idaho where it snows and they're up there during the snow. So they can actually handle all different kinds of temperatures. Now this water that we have at the San Antonio Zoo is actually heated year round. So it's a nice 74 degrees for them right now, which they don't really need because it's so warm out here in Texas. But in the winter, when it freezes here and it's starting to rain and hail, they are nice and toasty in the water. We actually don't see them come on land when it's very cold outside. Levi would like to know, how do they play? Do they play? What does it look like? They absolutely play. So in the wild, pelicans will actually form a circle, much like killer whales or dolphins, and they will actually all dip in and circle up a group of fish. That helps them to, to fish and to hunt. But it also is a form of play. So if you accidentally drop a water bottle in here, which is not my favorite thing to pick up, but they actually really like it, and they will toss the water bottle up in the air and throw it to each other, just like it's a ball. They actually have a lot of fun with it. They also like bubbles. We give them bubble enrichment. They play all the time. We've found duck eggs that are in here that a wild duck may have kicked out because they're uh, not fertile. And they'll toss the duck eggs up in the air. There's nothing alive in them, so it's completely harmless. But they like to play with the eggs and they don't really like it when we take the eggs away from them, which is kind of cute because they're still chasing us around for them. But 
it's something that they enjoy. And if you see them right now, since they've all just eaten, they will all swim together. This is a normal behavior for them. And they will dip their heads into the water and it's just an after feeding behavior. They all do it naturally. Of course, they're not gonna do it today because I pointed it out. <laughs> So they will play with sticks in the water, they'll play with the pollen in the water, but we've never seen them eat any of these fish, and I think it's because it's a little too big for them to eat. Can you tell us a little bit about these other birds that we're seeing in the exhibit? Yes, so if you guys look at these tall, skinny white birds in the back, those are actually native egrets. They are native to Texas. So the tall bird on the log in the water, that is a great egret. If you can see the turquoise on his nose, that's actually a breeding color. So the egrets are starting to breed right now because it's spring. And then the little guy up at the top of the log, he's got bright yellow feet. He's called a cattle or a snowy egret. We also have cattle egrets, which is this guy up here on the log. He has a peach chest and a peach head. And those are our three species of native egret in Texas. And the cattle egret up there is the same one that you'll see riding around on a rhino or a hippo's back in Africa. So these are all wild birds and they can fly. So they can actually fly off to get their own food in the park or at local lakes or wherever they wanna go for their food. So we don't feed them here because they can become aggressive towards the pelicans, but we do let them hang out here because they are a native species. And behind the pelicans, if you guys heard them earlier, we've got a pair of whooping cranes. Whooping cranes are endangered, and they were down to only 17 birds in existence at one point. And now their numbers are upwards of 800 birds total. So the San Antonio Zoo has actually played a huge part in breeding and raising whooping cranes and reintroducing them into the wild. And so we have a new pair down here and their names are Madison and Patty, and we are hoping that they are going to give us some chicks very soon in the future. They seem to be very in awe of each other and they follow each other around everywhere. The San Antonio Zoo has probably the third largest collection of birds in all of the United States. We have 20 full-time keepers at all times taking care of the birds. It's a lot of work around here. We have aviaries, we have endangered kingfishers, endangered dove species, the endangered whooping crane, a breeding pair of king vultures, all kinds of birds here. And we try to make our mark all over the world with our bird raising and breeding. Now these American white pelicans have not bred at the zoo before. If they do lay eggs, we will let them raise them. But because they are rehabbed, from the wild, we don't know how old they are exactly, so they may not be still a breeding age. Zara has a question. She would like to know, do pelicans come in other colors? They do come in other colors. So these are the American white pelicans. There's also the African white pelican and the Australian white pelican. There's also the African pink-backed pelican, as well as the North American brown pelican. And there's also a Dalmatian pel pelican, which I believe is from Australia, and they sound exactly how they look. So they are a Dalmatian. They are white with black spots all over them. And they are actually much bigger than these American white pelicans, if you can believe it. So only native to North America would be these American white pelicans and the brown pelicans that you'll see at the coast. The American white pelicans prefer fresh water, so lakes and rivers. The brown pelicans that you'll see on the coast prefer salt water, so they will be along the shoreline. The North American pelicans like to nest on rocks or on the ground, while the brown pelicans like to nest high up in trees. Brown pelicans will also dive from above, so they hunt solitarily and will dive straight into the water to catch their prey, while the white pelicans will be in the water and they will herd a whole group of fish together. They work together more than the brown pelicans. All right, Jennifer has our last question for our Facebook Live. What is the biggest bird that we have in San Antonio Zoo right now? Ooh, that's a hard question. 
So I'm pretty sure the largest bird we have here at the San Antonio Zoo would be the whooping crane. I don't know if you can see them back there. They weigh about 11 to 12 pounds each which sounds really low, but like I was explaining earlier, birds have hollow bones and organs so that they can fly. So they look much bigger than they actually weigh. So the whooping crane is the largest that we have currently. We also have ostrich oh, that's here at the right. zoo we and just cassowary. We of ostriches last year, that's right. So flightless birds, the largest birds that we have here at the San Antonio Zoo is ostrich and cassowary. They do not fly, but the largest flighted bird that we have here is the whooping crane. All right, guys, once again, my name is Tracy and I work here at the San Antonio Zoo in the Aviculture Bird Department. And I'm so happy you guys got to spend my pelican feeding with me. I hope you guys are staying safe out there and we will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.